Don't be too proud of this podcast you've got started. The ability to rank content is insignificant next to the power of an exceptional hot take. All right, it is hot takes time. And I've, I've got one that I don't know how hot it really is, but I went into Ahsoka, and I'll be honest. I walked in thinking this show is going to be mediocre. And it may end up being that. And that was just my expectation after watching what you know, I thought Obi-Wan was kind of mediocre. I know it's a hot take for a lot of folks, but that's where it was. Boba Fett, a lot of recent stuff with Mando. And I watched these first two episodes. And now I think to myself, this may be the Star Wars content that all Star Wars fans have been waiting on since 2014 or 2013, whenever it was announced that they were making The Force Awakens, I think this is more so what people wanted, even more so than Mando. Because people say they wanted Mando, but there weren't really lightsabers in it. Mm -hmm. This Mm -hmm. feels like that direct sequel to the... I mean, obviously, Rebels really kind of is that, but this is really that sequel we're saying, okay, after the Empire fell, then what? And what we want to do is go explore the galaxy, explore the lore, tie in Clone Wars, tie in Rebels, tie in the, you know, the the prequels, the sequels, or I guess sequels didn't exist, but the originals. Tie all of this stuff together, expand on it, bake it all into one thing in a cohesive story that we can then expand upon with a new galaxy, a new this, a new that. And really what everyone was asking for is heir to the Empire. Yep. And which seems like that's the direction they're 100% moving. This show so far is that. And if that's the case, I think this has the very real opportunity of being the best Star Wars content since 2005, Revenge of the Sith. Interesting. Um, I will say that Jake is reading Heir to the Empire right now. And I know that you predicted that this series would sort of lead up to a potential like film opportunity for Heir of the Empire. But just from what I've heard in his first like hundred pages of that book, it would, it's so EU that it would like break everything. Yeah. So, which I'm cool with. Like I like, I love the idea of this being like, this is its own like universe. It doesn't matter what happened before, but we just want to tell this really cool story because it's so good. I love that. Mm. Let's do it. But then it gets weird where it's like, well, they did do some of these things, but then they didn't do some of these things. But yeah, but tying into like that type of story without breaking everything, all the rules, like and yet like the the villain and heir to the empire, like they wouldn't use him. They could use Ezra, for example, mm. and now he's a villain. Mm-hmm. And so going along those storylines with. So your hot take is this has the potential to be the best Star Wars since 2005's Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, I think it does. I I think it's a an interesting take and when you say that this is what people I think were hoping and expecting for the sequel trilogy I I really agree with you there is it a hot take I I think it's a bit milk toast because it's too early to say. It's kind of a prediction. <laughs> Sorry, right, that's where I'm going. All right, all right, all right. You fool. Your take is milk toast. <laughs> all right, do you well, have one? I do have one. KG did give you a Roger Roger, so... Um, Thank you, KG. Yeah. And she also brings up all the love for Andor. Andor, let's not forget how good that was. Yeah, Andor, but Andor was not what anyone asked for. We're all happy we got it. That's true. That's true. It is not like for the everyday audience. Right. Whereas the everyday Star Wars fan was like, I want all of these things and then some. And then Papa Filoni was like, I haven't been promoted yet. Okay. So my hot take um, is a little bit on the prediction side. That Marak, the Inquisitor who like mysteriously didn't talk, didn't make any noise, is hidden and cloaked. And this is not my own opinion. I did see this somewhere and I love the idea of it, is actually Jason Sindula. And he kind of goes bad in the same way that Ben Solo turns and becomes sort of like the rift in the family 
where's Jason Sindula? I personally don't even want to see him, but if he is here, maybe he's an inquisitor and that would be kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's fine. I definitely think that's like a stretch. So the, the take is that you're hoping he is the inquisitor because that would make him interesting. Make cool. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I also, I mean, no, do I think, I don't even think that's a hot take either. I'll just be honest. I don't, Feel, I mean, I guess no. I mean, yeah, it'd be before. I feel like okay, but at least my instinct is that that character is somebody else in hiding, and I don't know if that's just my heart kind of at play because that'd be nice. It seems it's Luke, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Like it's Ezra, it's anybody, you know, it's fucking Han Solo. So I would lose it. If we got <laughs> Han Solo in this show. I don't even care what capacity i would lose it as long as they actually cast if any original trilogy characters are going to show up from here forward they need to be recast period point blank end of discussion we're not doing cgi anymore it's, it's done it's time to move on i don't know i'm kind of on the other side i want no. i want a deep fake no but i love the idea of like harrison ford and mark hamill coming back as like villains or like other characters that they get to like re-embody but no no more mark hamill as luke no more yeah i mean look we, is we that are, a hot take that's a first off that's the hot that's i'm gonna i'm gonna go with that because that is most certainly a hotter take than your first take <laughs> so no more mark hamill all right so i guess i'm not gonna argue with you i got a bad feeling about this hot take Look, I didn't love Mark Hamill in the sequels, but if he wants to come back, he's Luke Skywalker. I don't even love Luke Skywalker, but it just gives you the right to, you just kind of get to show up whenever you want. You're like the, if you're like the quarterback for the Eagles and they win the Super Bowl, it doesn't matter if you were like the greatest or not. You get free Philly cheesesteaks for life. Okay, but Mark Hamill's Philly cheesesteak can be a different character, a live action character, but he's never going to play the Phillies quarterback again, right? No, I mean, he can do that. No, he can't. As, he's I, not trained in football. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I love how you call him the Phillies quarterback. Like the Is NFL that what you Phillies. Say? The NFL Phillies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a whole bunch of different sports we're combining. That's okay. <laughs> Yay, sports. But hey, I'm sure if they have an MLS team, you know who the, the, that team is. I don't. Oh, okay. What sports do you follow? Um, just Premier League right now. What's what is that? Premier League is Europe, European football, the okay. real football. Oh, the real football. Yeah. Okay. okay. What are they? The, the what's your favorite team? The Phillies. Tottenham Hotspurs. Oh, do they play the Phillies? The they season? don't play the Phillies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You wouldn't let Mark Hamill play for him. I wouldn't. No probably a good idea actually yeah it's very, old. It's a very good idea i don't think he'd be able to kick a soccer ball so unless we have any other hot takes the last thing i have on our list to go over is bingo because let's we, do it we did have a couple bingo numbers go out so if you are joining us for ahsoka bingo um take a look at your scorecard we're going to be talking through what numbers you get to mark off each time um, we will allow one more week for people to get their submissions in because all of them are randomized. You just have to wait and see if you get yep. some or not. Um, the numbers that we got are number 11. Ahsoka is referenced as Fulcrum, which happened in the first episode. Uh, Lethal appearance, which was number 30. Sabine wields a lightsaber. Is number 37. Mm. Ahsoka's theme, obviously, is number 50. And then you have one that you want to kind of talk about. Yeah, you said there's we we listed one that says I'm no Jedi. We did get the line. We got we are no Jedi. Uh Balin School says we true. are no Jedi. On a technicality, that's true. So I think we're gonna hold off on that for now. Maybe 
Ahsoka will deliver that line again at another time. Okay. So again, you have we have four numbers: number eleven, number thirty, number thirty-seven, and number fifty. Five zero. Five zero. Man, I love bingo. I never win, but I love it. Yeah. Have you ever won bingo in your life? Um, I'm sure I have at least once. You seem like a person who just wins things. No. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. I've never hopefully won bingo. you can hopefully you can win maybe this time. Because last time we played bingo, I wiped the floor with you and Christian, if you don't recall. Yeah, yeah. But you, you picked a lot of easy ones. That was that's what happened. Yes, KG, you're correct. Eleven, thirty, thirty-seven, and fifty. And that's this week's episode of Duel of the Ranks. If you want more information about us, just look us up. We're on everything. Apple, Spotify, YouTube, all the things. We're on them. So go check it out. Like and subscribe. Share with your friends. I know all of your friends are watching and talking about Ahsoka right now. Um, I had several people reach out to me over the last couple of days and were like, what were your thoughts on Ahsoka? And I was like, tune in to Duel of the Ranks at 5.30 p.m. on Thursday nights. And because I'm not going to repeat myself three times. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. But you can repeat this episode three times. Yeah, you can. That's and what... you can also hold my feet to the fire if my opinion changes later on and be like, Amanda, you said. And I'll be like, you were right. And my opinion changed. I'm glad you said to the fire at the end there. I thought we've been talking a lot about opening up a Patreon. I thought we were going down some weird thing. You can hold my feet. And I'm like, well, oh, there we go. What are we going to do for sponsorships? <laughs> That's what we've been talking a lot about. What will we or won't we do? You can hold our feet to the fire. <laughs> you can. For a $7 a month Patreon yeah. <laughs> subscription. Hey, I mean, no are, aren't we just kind of silly for leaving that money on the table if people want to give it to us? <laughs> Or join us on Discord. Maybe that's a little bit safer. Safer. Yeah. yeah. Safer. I met this really nice guy in uh Austin yesterday. Austin, Texas, who joined, looked at our website, gave a lot of tips for Discord. So he said he'd nice. help us out too. Because KG did say she's like, I'll help you with Discord. And I haven't heard from her. Wow. Left me hanging. Wow, KG. Wow, KG. Left me hanging. Honestly, though, I did send an email. I probably, uh, I don't think I checked it since I. No, she said I missed Brody's <laughs> email last week. So we will get you your card, KG. Don't worry about it. We'll we'll send that to you oh, in that. a second. Yeah, in a moment. Yeah, yeah that's us. But that's... that is Duel of the Ranks. KG, all caps. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. All right. Well, that's this week's episode of Duel of the Ranks. If you like the show, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Leave a nice review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. They go a long way. So we're doing this for fun. Help the algorithm. Comment. We made this for you. Yes. We absolutely did. Hey, thanks so much. We look forward to having you next week for Ahsoka episode three. See you then. <laughs>